tie it in, Bobby. Back it up. We're not gonna Bobby. make it. Whoops. Whoops. Bobby, 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 Bobby. Go. Stand by, please. Five seconds. Behind the scenes is a great reporter. The first shots were fired about 10 seconds ago. Over towards the east. Behind a great reporter is a brilliant producer. What? No! Well, do it! Do it! Or I'll cry your fat ass! I had no idea she was this good. But in front of them all is a perfect face. Broadcast News. Tom should say the F-14 is one of the hardest planes to fly. The F-14 is one of the most difficult planes to master. Isn't the F-14 one of the most difficult machines for a pilot to master? I say it here, it comes out there. You knew just when to feed me the next line. There was like a rhythm to get into. It was like great sex. Well, I felt something. You're not well educated, you have almost no experience, and you can't write. And I'm making a fortune. I know I don't respect him. So what am I saying to you? You're saying stay away from it. I can't be. What do you do when your real life exceeds your dreams? Keep it to yourself. Tom, while being a very nice guy, <laughs> is the devil. At least kiss me when you do that. You just can't stop editing me, huh? He personifies everything that you've been fighting against. And I'm in love with you. They know everything that's happening in the world, except what they mean to each other. Get ready? Why? And cue them. Go. Hmm. Hmm. That was not an appropriate commercial for that movie. At all. <laughs> <laughs> I would think that was a totally different film. Totally, right? Absolutely. And that was a film I wouldn't watch at all. Yeah, th th yeah. This actually explains why I never watched this movie. Yeah. It's a great they know idea. everything well, going on in the world. Except they just said right before that that he doesn't know anything going on in the world, too, which is, makes it funnier, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it, it would have just been better off to have no trailer. <laughs> so let people guess what it's about. Say less. Because I, I yeah. you're right. I think that's the first time. I think it's the first time I've ever seen that trailer before, and I, I would not have had any interest in that movie. Well, why? It, I was like, <laughs> ah, it's just a typical stupid rom com, you know. Yeah. Especially when I was 15, 16 years old. Oh yeah, I'd be like, uh, no way. Looks like a yeah. dumb kissing movie. Yeah, I was yeah. 10. It was totally a kissing yeah. movie. Um, yeah. The only thing I really remember about this movie was just how blue everything was. Because, I mean, if we all remember the 80s, except for Forrest, uh, the 80s yeah. was brown. Like, yeah. like, like, like the walls, yeah. the clothes, everything was brown. Yeah. And then like in 87, everything became blue. And this movie is yeah. the personification of the blue of the 1987. All right, I'll take your word for that. Welcome to <laughs> Movie Night Extravaganza. Uh, we're talking about broadcast news uh, by Simpsons uh, co-creator um, James L. Brooks. At least that's the first uh, that's the first I've heard of him. Obviously, was being a kid yeah. and seeing uh, James L. Brooks pop up as a as a like as a, I think his name was like the first one at the end of the Simpsons during the credits. Um, and, uh, you know, he's done a whole bunch of other stuff, too. Taxi, he's done, uh, you know, uh, Terms of Endearment, as it says in that. But uh, this is, like, um, I think this is his second big film, if I'm not mistaken. I think the first one was uh, Terms of Endearment. Yeah. But to introduce the panel that we have here, I have J. Andrew World, uh, illustrator, artist, working up till the last minute. He's done. He's doing it all. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, I got cut off on... Um, uh... Uh, Ben's Colin show earlier. So um, TJ, if you're out there, um, call call back Thursday. We're gonna do this again. I want to answer your question. And charge that phone, Ben. Yes, <laughs> that's that's Ben. All right. Also joined by Conan Neutron, Protonic Reversal host, uh, Conan Neutron and the Secret Friends. What's going on? Uh yeah, man. Uh, I can't say I wasn't like working the last minute on that uh, on that theme song. I mean, sure, the last like twelve <laughs> hours, maybe something along those lines. But uh, yeah, we got some shows coming up, so that's exciting. I'm um, excited to talk about this movie as well. Uh, I remembered liking it a lot, but I don't think I'd like watched it in like 
20 years or something mm. like it was i was young when i watched it and i got a totally different experience about it excited to talk about it it's a good one all right and uh we're also joined by jonathan brown who plays in conan neutron and the secret friends live band action chief and used to play with uh tyranny is tyranny hello yes as i'm getting swallowed up by this chair it's funny <laughs> i'm look i'm looking at the screen and it's looking I have this orange thing is just swallowing me <laughs> because I have no torso, a very small torso and very long legs. So yes, uh, uh, I, the first time I saw this movie, I was in college. Uh, a ex, 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 ex girlfriend of mine rented it and I fell in love with it. Not because it was the intrepid love triangle that they tried to describe in the trailer. <laughs> Really leaning it's, into it's, it, by the way. Yeah. Really leaning into that part of it, which is the least interesting part. Yeah. yeah, but because it was all about where, because I was an avid news watcher. I was an avid yeah. political science major, very into, and I, and it was giving you a glimpse, much like Network, as we discussed, Conan, how it's giving you a glimpse into the future or maybe what was even starting to happen yeah. at that moment. But if you weren't paying attention, you wouldn't have, noticed and and that's the thing is through this and also i love most james l brooks movies and anything that albert brooks is in i i think is because he's albert brooks in yeah. every movie he's in he's very dependable yeah even uh, drive which which is amazing because it's just like yeah. a big departure for him yeah um it's but uh albert brooks <laughs> Yeah, he was uh, he was in the the season premiere of um, Curb Your Enthusiasm this season, um, and they did that. I saw that. Was, yes. Yeah, where they did a um, oh, it's like a, right a live wheelhouse. funeral. Yeah, they did a they did a live funeral for him, and uh, and, and he, he was a COVID injured. hoarder, right? Like yeah. he was like hoarding uh, yeah. toilet paper, right? If I remember, that was great. That was hoarding everything. Episode. He had that closet, and he had all the hand sanitizer in there. Yeah. And the, and the... <laughs> I'm laughing already. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, the... he... He's per. I'm sure he would have been perfect for for that. Yeah. Um, but uh, but this movie it it has so much, uh, even political, even historical intrigue to it that is hidden behind the thruple of a you know of a romance that's budding right. in this. Wow, I can't get over that trailer. That's <laughs> scarred me it, for it's, life. It's it's not a great trailer <laughs> at all. Like it, it's like you would think this is an entirely <laughs> different kind of genre. You would yeah. think it's an entirely different kind of uh, like level of quality. Like everything yeah. about that is just bad. That's yeah. a bad trailer. It kind of feels like I think uh, James L. Brooks for a lot of his career has kind of been um, assuming that, uh, you know, his audiences are pretty smart. They're going to get it. I mean, The Simpsons obviously is a yeah. pretty smart show. This mm -hmm. movie is a smart movie. And it seems like whoever uh, commissioned that trailer doesn't think their audiences are going to get any of it. And they're literally <laughs> just going through the love triangle like, Show the plebe yeah. the love triangle. You can't show them anything about the actual content <laughs> yeah. of the movie. <laughs> Those idiots will get that. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. It, you mentioned he did Terms of Endearment. You know, Deborah Winger was supposed to play the part that Holly Hunter did. That's on the show. Bonkers. To, to re yeah, it would have been a completely different movie, I think. Holly Hunter was, this, this movie was cast really, really well. You they know, cast her, I think, last too. They they went through yeah. a lot of different auditions and they couldn't find a lot of people yeah. and or they couldn't find the perfect person. They found a lot of people, but they couldn't find the perfect person to play her and um, cast her at the last minute. I think it's her first feature film that she I, did I, as a starring, yeah, as a yeah. starring role. I think I think you're right, Forrest. I was actually gonna just real time fact check the information before announcing it, but you're I think you're 100 percent right with that. Yeah, yeah, and she carries this movie and and uh, oh, I watched great. the school and Eber clip and they said the same thing that this was her first. Uh, major role so yeah i have a i have a clip of her talking about the casting process um i think this is a good clip to start with i i also had i wanted to start with one with uh william hurt but i think this is a better place to start yeah off camera with sam jones <laughs> you mentioned broadcast news because that was the film i first saw you in and it was this film that had such a massive important role for a woman right in the center of it yeah, yeah. at that time did you realize how rare that was at that time? Well, you know, when I got broadcast news, I thought I was going to have a nervous breakdown. And I remembered that, that I got, it, it was, it was, it was, it was tremendous, tremendously high pressure. I'd been hearing about this, the movie, and that he was looking for this leading 
misleading female role for about seven months before I went in. Oh, wow. So he was like auditioning like crazy. Um, and finally, he, he didn't find what it was he was looking for, whatever mysterious alchemy he was looking for between the actress and the, and the part. And, and finally, they just went, okay, open up the dregs. Let's just see every freaking body. And so then I came in and um, they thought that I was uh, coming in for a PA. They, they thought that I was coming in to, uh, for, to, to get a production assistant job. Really? For a movie. So, no, 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 I'm, I'm here to audition for the Jane Craig. And um, they went, oh, oh, okay, well, sure. So, <laughs> I, so then I, I got the part. It was an immediate kind of thing. And then I was rehearsing. Like the next day. Really? Yeah. I mean, so we, so on your initial audition, James Brooks was in the room. It was Jim, and they were both wow. there. And and listen, we started rehearsals like, you know, the next day after I got the part, and at the end of the week, I like broke down. Um, I was crying, and um, and Jim said, "Honey, you know why are why are you crying?" And I just said, "Oh, I'm crying because." Because I, I have an ear infection and I'm kind of sick. And and Bill Hurt said, "You're crying because you're scared." <laughs> and it was just like busted. <laughs> um, and it was amazing that he said that. He just named me, and um, I kind of, I I was embarrassed, but I loved him for it because there was an intimacy between Bill and me. Like from that moment, I just felt that. Bill could see me whether I liked it or not. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That's it, that's interesting. Um, I yeah, I mean, I I think that they. I wonder who else they cast. I don't know if Conan wanted to do that or that they would have cast. Like um, I. If I would have prepared for that bit, uh, yeah, I would love to do that. I, I totally did not. Well, I, can, I can try to do it in real time. But uh, I know that there were, I mean, there were other people that were being uh, thought about for this, like that were more established uh, actresses. So uh, let me uh, let me get my top people on it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do. I it's it's funny i mean even in light of you know everything with william hurt and found out after he passed and it's it's interesting that she she mentions that um uh you know and, and it even opens up like and my wife and i were talking about this last night where um where it's like how many people do you know who have passed or not passed you know and now that we're you know in, in light of the me too movement you know and kind of the wake of that you find out other things about them and then you know and does it does it does it change your view of stuff does it do you look at them in a different light when you because i even haven't watched this movie in, and it's and it's one of my favorite movies um of all time um but i haven't watched it probably in about five years you know before i watched it again last night maybe you know maybe four years um but i but i think that's interesting uh, uh that she had said that uh, about him so he seems so to be I, a little bit of an off-putting guy like even the yeah. uh, letterman um interview that i watched with him he kind of has yeah. this weird this weird uh mercurial i guess is the word for it edge to him that he's like kind of unreadable and i think he uses that to his advantage in this movie yeah. but i think that he's more um open and vulnerable in this movie than he probably was in real life but you know it's this strange like kind of unreadable uh very open quality to it in a lot of his films, he's, he's very, you know, like vulnerable and open in, in a way, um, you know, uh, lost in space. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry I brought that one up. But, but you know, <laughs> uh, Dark City, I, I think, is actually a great one because mm -hmm. there is a certain vulnerability his, his hard as nails detective actually has when he pulls out the accordion and starts playing it. Like, they, he's almost, mm -hmm. you know, crying while he's playing the accordion. And, and it's just, you know, such a, such a fascinating scene. But it, William Hurt always brings that kind of like, th there's a vulnerability to him. And, and he really does like, you know, even in, in just garbage, like lost in space, it, it really, he does raise the bar to it. So get this, uh, Catherine O'Hara. Huh. Was yeah, actually that would, that would a role. Andrew role. That would, be, that would have been a terrible casting choice. Yeah. But apparently she did great in her, in her first 
audition, terrible in her second edition, and third and really did really great in her third mm. one, and then like it kind of became a coin toss. So yeah, that's she a different that, movie. It was in that lull too, right? Because we talked about this during Beetlejuice. Yeah. We watched the clip yep. of her talking about how she had that like career lull between Second City and uh, like Beetlejuice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think she's great. I don't see it. It's a different movie. I, I can't even. Yeah, I. I, I can't even see it. You don't, I you don't see. root for you don't root for Catherine O'Hara. That's no. the thing. Like, like you root yeah. for Holly, Holly, Holly Hunter in this. No matter like no. what decision she makes between you know between the two uh, guys she's using between Aaron and and Tom. Like no matter what, you're still rooting for her to uh, succeed in the end and to find love yeah. and to have her career and love balance. And like it doesn't seem like it's really going to work out with either of them throughout the whole course of the movie. And yeah. you can talk about that ending that just kind of feels tacked on. Yeah. Apparently, there's a second ending that is different. I didn't. Yeah. Know. Yeah, I which was, would have been terrible. Which but, I didn't yeah. get to that far in the uh, the the cut scenes, but there's also a gay subplot. Yeah, yeah which would have been movie. terrible too. Yeah, no, no, it didn't add anything to, to it. It, it, it didn't. Just, yeah, I, I mean, the thing is, it's like, like the scenes were interesting, mm-hmm. and and I think after you watch the film, you know, like to watch them was like, oh, oh, this actually like really develops Tom a little bit as as a human, because because yeah. he's you know, but the problem is is that Tom needs to be that kind of like. Um, uh, he he needs to be that himbo. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's like really, he's he really awesome. is an archetypical himbo, right? Like that's kind yeah. of the. And, and those scenes give him a little depth because he's actually doing journalism. Yeah, yeah, like, and, and I mean it's kind of a wild place to take it as well. But it's also almost like I like the things that I think make this movie work isn't because there's a lack of ideas or like things going on. Like it's a sort of like that would just be more stuff, frankly. Yeah, I mean, like, it, it, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just gonna say, like, like none of the scenes that I saw like added anything to the movie. You know, yeah. like sometimes you watch a cut scene, and you're like, oh wait, that way that changes the that changes everything. But right, you know, th- these were just like it was all fluff. It was nothing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think the only thing that at least the scene with the with the gay character from State from State Department would have added is when he mentions time to tap that resource from your from your friend at state department, you know, when they're in the house and yeah. they have to do the, that's the only thing it would have added. It would have added context to that. Yeah. That, that's Other like than the that, only thing that survived from that yeah. whole subplot. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't make oh, sense. Tom that's cut. gay and has a, has a, or Tom that's bi and has a person at state department that. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Well, Tom, Tom doesn't, you know, have, the guy has a crush on him. Um, yeah. Uh, but Tom, Tom finds like this friendship and it really does kind of humanize him a bit. Yeah. But, but that's supposed to be kind of Tom's MO too. And you, it, at least the way I interpret it. And, and even yeah. like even a bigger picture in this movie is, is, uh, you know, of who's the likable character in this movie. Yeah, I mean the most likable one's probably Holly Andrews' character, but even then she's like, oh, "Is she God, though? Should, you're such <laughs> a jerk sometimes." Yeah. Yes. Well, I, I said yeah, I chose okay. my words carefully. Like um, the, yeah. the guy likeable, in the video right? booth who who um, you know, <laughs> yeah. later went on to murder um, uh, uh, Robin Williams' wife in in the movie um, uh, the one where he was crazy and naked in Central Park. Um, Fisher King. Yes, Fisher King. Oh. He, how, did, he, oh. how did I get it from that? <laughs> I don't know how many movies was uh, was uh, Robin Williams naked in Central Park. I, I mean, <laughs> honestly, this is kind of what it's like with Lindsay and I on the couch, so maybe that's why. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the one where and like some weird, like I don't think of that at all with that, but I happen to catch that one detail. So anyway, um, uh, he he got to do that, so good for that guy because here he just got to be the editor. Which, by the way, classic uh, editing drama, like the scene where they're. Where she's trying to uh, uh, produce that that news clip, like yeah. at what would be the last moment for like an old analog like studio mm-hmm. setup, right? Where he, and like then uh, Joan Cusack has to like haul ass across the whole studio, like jumps over the kid. Classic like, scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and you really, you really got. <laughs> You, you really forget that Joan Cusack really has that bot. Like she can do the body comedy really well, right? Like oh yeah, yeah, yeah physical yeah. comedy. Yeah, yeah. Jump over them and like. And, and I feel like as she's gotten bigger, like her roles in movies have gotten bigger. They've kind of shed that part of her uh, repertoire. Like, I, I don't right. see her having those roles as much um, now. So it's funny to see her doing that. She's so good at it, though. I mean, like such a 
such a natural, you know, mm-hmm. at, at doing those kind. Of, in fact, when she, when she slams into the water, into the water fountain, That's so good. like it, it looks absolutely real. Like, like, oh! like she, like it, she didn't mean to do it like quite yeah. like that, but it worked, you know, and yeah. even how she yeah. recovers and kind of limps and she's still <laughs> half running and yeah. limps up the stairs. Um, yeah. Classic, classic scene. Um, you know, and they still it, it, they still fire her. She did yes, all of that, which is crazy. Yeah. Still, still part of the layoffs, the, which the it brutal, shows how ruthless that industry. The brutality is. of capitalism. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. There, but but back to what I was saying is who is the likable character though? Um, is that I think I felt like by design none of them are likable. Yeah. yeah. It's like you it's know. like faulty towers um, or, or something like that. Yeah. Where you hate all the characters, but yeah, but you don't. Yeah, I mean, because even like Tom's character, it, 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 but at least like with with all of them, they give you a little. There's a lot of push pull, you know, with where where Tom like he's really nice to the editor. Obviously, nobody's very nice to him. He yeah. he thinks the guy drops his pen. Tom automatically gives him another one, and it see everyone seems and and the editor seems shocked by it. Like, oh my god, this guy's being nice to me, and I'm not yeah. used to this, you know. But then at the same time, you know, he. He, you know, uh, uh, creates this, you know, he, he, he uses, uh, uses a scene within a story to, to shed a tear. And he, he does kind of the, the little, you know, shortcuts, the, the underhanded stuff for, you know, fluff. So, I mean, in, in Holly Hunter, she seems really smart, very, you know, very energetic, very, you know, uh, um, enthusiastic and knowledgeable of her job. But she takes it out on everybody else if they're not at her level. You know? Yeah, um, and and I mean know, it's kind it, of the it's the classic uh, flashover substance question. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Time period because one side has distinctly won out at this point, right? Like the yeah. flash side of things has distinctly run out in in newsrooms and yeah. media rooms across the country, and the local ones, like or even the regional ones, like this is, um, they've been completely slashed to the to the bottom of yeah. everything, right? Like, we're what, kind what of, region are we in? <laughs> No, I'm just so saying, he's, he's oh, talking about the station in the in the in the movie. Yeah, oh, okay, I'm talking about okay. regional, no regional like stations, right? Because they're in the Washington yeah. D.C. bureau of a of the national media. news. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But as 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 someone who's objectively flashy in this show and in life, <laughs> I do find that to be one of the more interesting things. They make this like a historical document, like the concern of like, oh well, he's making himself the story, right. like oh we don't do that. What's the new? And it's like now it's like everybody does that. Yeah. That's like. Yeah. That but is, the thing is the, the thing it's like, hey, everybody, that, it's like, it's like, right, maybe I can get a point guy, out. <laughs> is he the bad guy for doing that? Or is Albert Brooks the bad guy for like completely gaslighting and manipulating well, like emotionally? There you go, though. Polly Hunter, which because I think, like, yeah. I, I, I'm just like, I don't know. Tom seems like the much better guy at this point. Like, but, it, but it, you're not wrong, though. But that's the thing. You're not wrong. But, but you're not wrong. Somebody else is going to think the opposite. That's the great I, thing about this movie. Is I think everybody, yeah, yeah, exact. Everybody gets kind of because I think of all of them, I would say Tom is probably of the three, he's at least the almost outwardly nice and 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 you know and and polite and palatable of the three. I mean, Albert Brooks probably the worst because I feel like everybody's known (laughs) that bully before. The bully who got bullied becomes a bully, but isn't right. very good at it. Yeah. <laughs> but uses he you uses know? his intellect, I think, to kind of do these. Uh, it's almost yeah. like a Looney Tunes type thing. He uses these, his intellect to do yeah. these like cockamamie schemes to gaslight Tom and to, uh, yeah. you know, you know what? Himself. I'm glad you said that for us because he does have a little bit of wily e. coyote energy. Yeah, I say. <laughs> like a little bit, a little bit, and, and it makes his his uh, sweat laden performance uh, <laughs> all the more deeply hilarious because it's very earned that like you know he wants to be you know the popular kid and he knows that he's good at writing the news but nobody cares about the message they care about the messenger and it's like the messenger oh the messenger in this case tom like makes people feel good oh they like they like him because he he makes them feel good it's like well who cares about that i want to get the the message out i want to be to do this reporting and then when people just don't care about that at all it drives him almost literally crazy yeah to the point that he's like oh well if i have my hold on andy for a second he's like if if, if, to, to the point that he if he's like if i have my perfectly written script 
with my impeccably reported stories and just deliver the words like David Mamet's ideal actors deliver the words. Everyone will love me and I will be success at this. And it's just the, not just a miserable failure. It's comically so. And it, go ahead, Andy. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, I was just going to say, and also the part where he paints that, that giant uh, cave uh, behind uh, Tom. And then the train comes out and kills Albert Brooks. It, it right, right. The, the classic deleted scene. That, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would have had context. They should have left that in the movie. And yeah, yeah exactly. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they, they cut it for hours. time. The movie was two hours and 12 it's minutes. Too long. Yeah, it's too long. There's no room. Yeah. There's no room. It, it, would be, it would be pretty funny to see William Hurt like this, dressed, dressed, <laughs> dressed going on his vacation. And, on the... <laughs> um, yeah. No, but I think that there's this, uh, you know, apart from the personal stories, right, there's that flash over substance point. And I feel like Tom's uh, logical endpoint now, right? Like this himbo figure that um, is really good at like kind of pretending to emote in some way or like pretending to have these um, vulnerable experiences on camera. I feel like Anderson Cooper kind of embodies that. I was just going to say Anderson Cooper. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Like a hundred percent. And that has become the ideal of newscasting. That has become not something that's even controversial. It's like, that is what newscasting is. And to a lesser degree, you might have someone like like a Rachel Maddow or something along those lines. But like, yeah, it's, it's Anderson Cooper, flat out. And it, it, like that side won in a walk. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, of course. I mean, it, even the, the scene in the movie where, you know, when it, Albert, young Albert Brooks as a teenager it's like, I'm going to tell you something's going to ruin you for life. You're never going to make more than $19,000. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it's like. Hmm, 19 grand. Not bad. Not bad yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's that. A bit, oh, it's. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, but like, I'm going to exactly see the world. You're not going to see anything. You're going to stay in this town. He's like, yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. Like, oh, great. I'm, Whatever. I'm the okay. The, the, the big big Because <laughs> nobody spoke like a selfie. Like, like, that's where my mom's from. And, and like I, my whole family talks like a Southie, um, you know. I should have Mark Wahlberg play the uh, it's okay. play microprocessors. <laughs> Did they say that? <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's a whole different. Yeah, it, it was just you like can, it was driving me nuts that scene because because I kept mentioning yeah. like like Boston and it was like, I know. Yeah, why nobody. Why why, why are you not talking about pocket the car? Come on. Yeah, he's yeah. getting he's getting bullied by Mark Wahlberg and Matt Damon from The Departed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and give them the, give them the business. Yeah, Ben Affleck's the third guy. <laughs> but I oh, think no. that those yeah. those scenes of those two guys, uh, especially to a lesser degree the Holly Hunter character, but to those guys, like you get like a real taste of like what kind of what kind of jerk they are right mm -hmm. like because because the, the william hurt character as young is like oh what are they you know they beat them off a, with a stick what does that mean why should i be judged based on my looks or something then like, it was like oh that's hilarious and, and, and the dad's like that's not a real problem or whatever he says again. <laughs> but like that's like, no, that's just something like well if that's your only problem yeah. right right that's exactly yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh but the, but it tells you so much about those characters uh just with like you know like one little scene each Right? Yeah, the, you know, the Albert Brooks character has, a, has like a two by four on his shoulder, always yeah. like, you know, having to prove something to himself, if not others, and, and believes that because he's the smartest guy in the room, that that means he should be the most successful and get yeah. all the things that he wants. And uh, genuinely and impressively graduating high school at 15. Like, I don't know. Sure. Kind of, yes. And I mean, at all and his thank stage. you. And I forgive <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um no and then, uh, and then so they have, uh, the young version of uh of jane say uh could you be a little more precise instead of calling someone something like obsessive is a, yeah. is a classic line <laughs> yeah her, her... Being obsessed over <laughs> right yeah 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 i mean and that tells you that tells you a lot about her character, but not nearly so much as when she's giving the talk with the, the rest of the broadcasters, yeah. uh, which, which is just a, <laughs> like, that's one of the ones that I was like, oh, my God, like, I forgot how brutal this is. This is like <laughs> so nuts. And then she's like, and instead of covering this story, they showed this fluff. And then, the, you know, like she plays the thing of like the dominoes and hey, oh, it's, everyone's it's into it. it. And everyone's like, oh, that's I awesome. The we love this. Yeah. <laughs> then when they it's over, everyone just, files, <laughs> everyone just files out the second it's yeah, over. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. All right. Good, we can leave now. Oh, yeah, right on. It's, okay. a, it's a real, it's a real question, right? Like, um, <laughs> people don't like what makes good news, what makes comprehensive news, yeah. what actually informs us is not the same thing as what entertains us. Yeah, and I feel like it's a constant push pull in the direction of, um, well, not really at this point. Now it's just purely entertainment. We have Fox News, we have CNN. Like, 
We have MSNBC going full Fox News with Russia stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that, like a very specific thing is one out. But, you know, there was a time when the question was about, you know, are we supposed to inform people, which might leave them bored to tears? Or, uh, you know, how much of our news should just be about entertaining people and doing things like this giant domino thing that then gets, you know, uh, completely falls down and everyone's like, yeah, that's awesome. And and <laughs> which, which, to be fair, it is sick. That is. Yeah. That is yeah. Cool. yeah. Like, you know, give me any Rupert Goldberg machine video from Sesame yeah. Street. And I'm happy. And I know I I mean I'm I'm 50 so I'm dating myself but I and and Forrest I mean I think we've you know it was already established you may not remember this but I remember the show that's incredible when they yeah, used to man. show like Domino stuff <laughs> of show. every week like Domino you know it seemed like that was that was a it seemed like to be a big thing in the 70s and 80s like Dominoes knocking down Dominoes yeah uh, and I mean, for a while they had the Dominoes uh, the Dominoes theory you know like. I feel like maybe towards the end of the the communist era, like the end of the USSR, oh. like you know, maybe they were like, you know what, let's just make these dominoes. Order from all Domino's Pizza, capitalism will win. Yeah, that's the dominoes theory, right? That's it. Let's put let's put it in the Salt Two Treaty. You know, we, we're, we're the gonna noid. use actual dominoes. Do you and, remember uh, the, the the Noid? Uh, like, yeah. from, remember when like someone like uh, shot up a place or killed someone or something? I can't remember what it was, but he 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 claimed to be uh, he was influenced by the Noid. <laughs> so Which is the, like, uh, well, that's not? the famous uh, that's the famous son of Noid, right? Um, <laughs> son of Noid, yeah, the famous killer, son of Noid, <laughs> the Zodiac Noid. But but that's that's <laughs> that's why they had to retire that beloved character uh yeah, oh, then, uh, which was they did bring air it, quotes huh? <laughs> yeah well that's that's air, it's it's air quotes <laughs> beloved character yeah no, i had i had all the little all figurines right. along with my little et figurines yeah and my ewok figurines and i had like adventures together but did yeah they ever know anybody did they ever tell you to to go in and shoot a play yeah, club? no they, actually all the time <laughs> they just gave him advice on how to improve his credit score. It's really weird. But yeah, the Noid was maybe the one of the most annoying things on, on commercials yeah. at the time, yeah, which is saying yeah, a lot. But like being driven driving when someone to murder. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you got like, hey, it's it's a, he's crazy, he runs around and does stuff and he's bendy or whatever. Great. <laughs> Fantastic. Anyway, well, having uh, nothing to do with the Noid. Uh yeah. I think well. <laughs> Do you guys think that uh, broadcast news is a, is a pretty good metric for the rise of that kind of infotainment culture? Because I, Conan, infotainment neutron, uh, think that it is. <laughs> I yeah, I mean, I, I think that Tom is uh, better than a lot of what we have now. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it <laughs> that, like he would totally be a trade up. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I feel like we've, I feel like at this point we've reached the point where even uh, even Tom would kind of be. Uh, fully retired, be like, hey, maybe we should step back a little from doing it this way. He'd um, be like Keith Olbermann, right? <laughs> Hopefully, um, not as big of a dick, uh, but yeah. yeah. But, but, uh, you know, one thing though, uh, I, I mean, it kind of was going on beforehand, obviously, because you know, they wouldn't have made this movie otherwise. But I remember, um, talking about like, uh, how like Washington correspondents would actually trade, uh, not reporting on certain stories to get access to the White House. Uh, because they wanted to be able to talk right. to, uh, you know, people in the Reagan administration, mm -hmm. and if they reported certain stories, they would they would essentially get kicked out, and and like you know um, that still happens to this day. Um, right, talk to Ronan Farrow, exactly. Yeah. Well, that uh, kind of brings us to our to the uh, ultimate Tom president, I would say Kennedy, who um, used his uh, charisma and charm to actually get reporters to not report stories that were. Yeah especially about his affairs to people who are, you know, chasing down leads about stuff. He would give them this. Era, don't book. worry about it. <laughs> Which, by the way, uh, has a better accent than those guys from uh, Boston. Era, um, era, um. <laughs> he, <laughs> he, he would give them this uh, superficial <laughs> White House access in exchange for dropping stories. And he would, you know, charm them and take them to dinner and all this stuff. That's kind of, I think, the, the height of, um, that's the height of really the Cronkite era where, uh, yeah. you know, they kind of were in this whole informational mode. But also, I think that was the point where the media felt like they had some kind of um, they had some kind of uh, obligation to the government or they had some kind of obligation to the state to report things in ways that, you know, to kind of work in tandem with, with the government. And that kind of has started to fall away, which is a good thing, I think, uh, to Damn some Vietnam. degree. Like, Ruined it all. <laughs> but but also, you know, we've, we've gotten kind of news that's so hyper-partisan at this point that the news uh, on one channel will kind of, plot to like like you know you have something like msnbc covering uh every single trump 
possible uh, charge, every single Trump like impeachment thing rapidly. And then you have Fox News kind of, um, you know, covering that as if like, oh, they found nothing. They found nothing. So maybe that's not a good uh, part of it. But it is good. That I think that they've at some point have um, stopped feeling like they have some obligation to cover things up in exchange for, uh, you know, making sure the government works in the correct way or, you know. Well, it's like, it's, yeah. it's like we talked about on Friday with Vice, right? I wish that that movie Bombshell had been a better movie because I think that's an interesting story worth telling. And there really hasn't been a lot of stories told about how Fox News changed uh, changed newscasting um, because the ones that have are all like documentaries that only liberals watch. Mm-hmm. Right. And and it's like that that doesn't count. That doesn't count. And the things people think about like, well, there's certain things that uh, we think of as like tropes now that are all like, you know, in the late nineties, it was, was kind of crazy. They're like, Oh, why this Fox is doing a news. And they're like, what's going on with this? Like it's all salacious. And all right, that's interesting. And then they just flat out started framing language and framing the political debate of this country. And the rest of the news agencies all just kind of followed them. Cause they're like, Oh, well we're going to, you know, our sister, network here is is doing this so we got to follow this as well and they basically got played and continue to be played to this day because they don't understand the concept that you can't stop a frame with a fact attack you just can't yeah. it's not how it's not how it works yeah and we're, they just we're very much they the haven't gotten it era. We're, we're very yeah. much in the fact checking era and nobody cares about the fact checking area era no. except um you know like uh I, i'd say there's some like uh pmc like pro- professional managerial types who think they can stop the train moving with a fact check like you know some of the more high minded liberals i think think that they can really stop a train from going in one direction with a fact check those are the only people that that appeals to but that's also the only uh group that msnbc really appeals to you know what albert I mean? like, brooks's character if he was a real life dude in in um in, in this world would be on twitter and would be one of those guys and would be have a blue check mark and he would have a million followers and would be he would have some sort of fact attack kind of like hashtag that he just goes around and like you know rants about and, and things along those lines for like whatever he's totally one of those guys not, yeah. not say he's a dummy he's a very smart person yeah. but he chooses to use the application of, of, of the like if i throw enough facts at these people, they will be swayed to the correct opinion, which is mine. But but don't you think that that was probably the case, no matter what? I mean, if if I think now with you know now that we have a twenty four hour news cycle, and you know, I, I I think that absolutely adds to it. And of course, you're absolutely right. But I I think even as far as you were talking about how you know like how different reporters would make deals, hold stories back. Um, you know, that, that's happened in the sports world as well, you know, political world, entertainment world, um, all, all through. But then again, when you're only dealing with X amount of big newspapers and three networks and, you know, I think it's, it's easier to go along with that. But I think like Walter Cronkite might've kind of been that guy, but he didn't need to be because nobody was out there trying to outdo the other, like, like, no, yeah. You know, and and uh, you know, I I think you know tying broadcast news back to it, um, all tied into like the layoffs that they had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, because yeah. this is very key. This is very important. Yeah, yeah. please go ahead. Yeah, it, but but to the layoffs because that you know that happened for real. You know, I mean, in the eighties, you know, it especially, still very much is happening. It, it's happened still happening, week. but yeah. definitely yeah. it was a. <laughs> Because, you know, news was always a loss leader for networks, you know. It, the news and, didn't have to make money. It was yeah. the news. Yeah, it was also and required then, by law yeah. Um, yeah. That, that they had to uh, provide a public service. And that is mm-hmm. what the news is for, which is why on, you know, for example, WKRP, um, you know, bring it back to, to, to reality here, um, that they had a, <laughs> you know, on a rock station, there was a, you know, a, a news yeah. chief that, that was yeah. on the show. Because mm-hmm. that was the public good that the uh, radio station was providing was less Nesman's news. It was less Nesman, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And more, and news it, and, it, more news and less Nesman. Um, I think it corresponds also to we watch Vice, and a big part of um, the things that Dick Cheney was able to do as a congressman um, was he was part of uh, repealing the fairness doctrine, which, yeah. you know, well, that, that was gonna, yeah. yeah. So the hyper-partisan nature of news comes from there, right? Because like, you always have to provide, um, even in kind of a name cases, and the right knew completely how to exploit this, which makes it funny that Reagan's the guy that, uh, you know, pulled that or was pushing to pull that because the, the Reagan the Reagan um, campaign, before, like, 
both the 1976 one and the 1981, um, very much knew how to use the fairness doctrine to their own advantage mm-hmm. and how to get their own person on. Even like even with the most inane stories, they get their own conservative voice on there to like refute it. Um, but yeah, that that led up to uh, you know something like Fox News being able to even start because um, then you don't have to have someone refute it. You could just do partisan whatever for the mm-hmm. entire news cycle. But the uh, 24 news uh, 24 hour news cycle starts in 1980 with cnn Mm -hmm. being founded um and i wanted to i wanted to add that to our to our discussion here yeah but i I think it totally adds into going back to the movie taking that as well you know cnn starting a person like tom is ripe for the picking perfect for i mean for that time (laughs) you know i mean and and so every and then you know you could see how somebody like that on every major network would be just screaming, scouring for that guy, for that man or woman, you know, to 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 be the face of their news, but not really know much. Just just literally well, yeah, he doesn't, look he doesn't appealing to, and yeah, yeah. Right, he doesn't he's need an empty suit, right? Like because nobody's hiring Walter Cronkite anymore. I, I no, they're you know, hiring it, Dan Rather, and we're we're gonna waterboard him on the yeah. show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but John we're, Barber of Real People wants to have waterboarded. That was a classic <laughs> episode of this show, by the way. <laughs> One of the most um, jarring things I've ever been on any show. I was like, wow, okay. But but Not yeah, so opening, opening it up to a 24 news cycle, uh 24 hour news cycle, right? Turns it into a, a more um competitive and less informative um uh media atmosphere a hundred percent. Because you know, before that, there's three networks, they each kind of have to cover the same stories, they all have morning news, evening news, uh stories get prioritized in the evening news. If you're breaking a story, you know the other two networks probably have that story already. If you're going to do it exclusively, it still gets broken at this time. There's a prime time. Um, so it's not, you know, so it's kind of scheduled like that. And with the 24 hour news cycle, it totally changes the um, it, it kind of changes how news can even get formulated. And it changes um, the, the incentives, like the media incentives that people have to throw these stories out there. And, the, you know, what stories get covered? Well, everything's covered now. Everything's up for grabs mm-hmm. now. Like it's no longer. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I just also want to add that um, CNN didn't take off till the mid '80s, though, uh, with, with the 24-hour news thing, but yeah. until like that girl fell down a well. It was um, the baby Jessica. Uh, yeah, yeah, baby, baby Jessica. Jessica. Yes. <laughs> uh, Who I, I, I I related that story when Helios Creed was on Protonic Reversal, and for some reason I misunderstood me and was thought it was something that was happening now, and I was like, <laughs> oh. but Helios Creed is like permanently yeah. high or just in his own. Yeah. Place, so that, that says more about him than anything else. But also, j- there's not give me another opportunity to bring this up. You know who was started in with cnn when it first started in 1980 i'd forgotten about this lou dobbs yeah. money line oh, yeah. lou dobbs yeah. who are friend of the show uh anna kasparian and uh, francesca fiorentini were just in the other room talking about had marjorie taylor green on and like on his some i guess he's got a podcast i forgot that dude was alive frankly yeah. but like uh, <laughs> yeah that's how long that guy was has yeah. been around who's basically any reputation he had like he long since you know, yeah. skull fucked away 10 years ago, but like, yeah. Uh, Lou Dobbs is on like, CNN. Like Don Rickles. You forget he's dead. And, and it's like, wait, is he, is right. he alive? Yeah. Oh, no, no, Don Rickles is dead. Him. Wait, 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 wait. Is, is Lou Dobbs alive? Oh, shit, he is. Oh, he is. <laughs> Henry Kissinger's <How>? still alive? <laughs> Everybody. How many Ramones are left? Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> it seems like. I, I, I'm not going to make a Gil- Gilbert Gottfried joke because uh, now I'm too getting soon. Heat Although he would love it, he 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 would he would he would love it. You know? Yeah, <laughs> which which oh man, uh, he he was great though. Not yeah. this, he wasn't yeah. in this movie though. Uh, wouldn't it be great if he Gilbert was? Gottfried in the Albert Brooks role? <laughs> Gilbert Godfrey in the Tom role. Oh, Gilbert I'm just so <laughs> handsome. Everybody loves me, but everyone <laughs> plays it up as if he is like a handsome dude, right? That would be amazing. Like so, same did, movie, same yeah. scenes. Did same they keep the game freaking... uh, subplot, which which would actually work then. <laughs> that'd be that'd be incredible. Time to yeah. tap my source. <laughs> 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 and that's his catchphrase. He just says that like he every says 20 that. minutes. Or so. No matter where he is, he's at a dinner. You know, he's 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 with Holly Hunter. Like, 
you know, like they're they're putting the moves on each other, and he's like, "Time to check this." <laughs> like just out of nowhere. Do, do you do you remember? <laughs> is it forty eight hours that, that he's in Gilbert Gar? He's got like a super small part, and like he, he's in it for like ten seconds, but it's it's astounding. Like it's, it's, it's so good. They're, like Eddie Murphy's like asking him about like uh, why his car. Like they're trying to get leverage on him, and tr- like uh, oh, it's got these parking tickets. Like that's my wife. It's in my name, but she has it. And then he picks up the phone and goes, "You bitch." <laughs> puts it down <laughs> like immediately <laughs> 48 hours on recently says so there's um <laughs> there's really uh, sorry, remember the old cop ah there's a really amazing movie. documentary called gilbert and it's it kind of follows him around uh i think it's on well it was on hulu for a while someone made a documentary about him it turns out he's like this quiet sweet old man and it's nothing like the character that he plays he doesn't even like obviously he doesn't use that voice in real life well, yeah, so it's just like really... Bobcat Goldthwait. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. re- remember, um, Gabe pointed out that that he actually used his real voice in tape heads. Yeah. So uh, there's. I think the, he um... did it in, in Blow too, in the scene he is in in Blow, or it's definitely not nearly as. Yeah, but anyway. So anyway. so like there's these scenes where he's talking. And he's like he has like a, actually a quiet kind of like uh, a little bit hoarse voice, and he's like and he kisses his like really sweet looking wife on the cheek, and he's leaving his like really nice apartment, and then there's like a cut to, and he's on stage. He's like a really sweet old person apartment too. And he seems like he's this quiet yeah. guy and it cuts to him on stage and he's like fucking and sucking. And like, that's, the, <laughs> that's the, I don't know. It's such a good documentary. He like goes up and he realizes that he's uh, he like, he's like talking to all these civil war, um, civil war reenactment guys. And like, is genuinely connecting with them. It seems just like kind of sweet and old and is like on tour by himself. And I don't know, it's kind of like this diet, this nice. diametrically opposed life that he lived. <laughs> this is a documentary. Yeah, it's called Gilbert. Nice. Well, RIP to a legend. That was his. Say, say, say there's nobody like that dude, and there never will be again. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. But, uh, you know, broadcast news. Um... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that, that movie. Yeah. <laughs> so I, Which does I found... not have Gilbert Gottfried, and is totally missing it. This, yeah, is, this is a couple of minutes. Yeah. Um, I found James L. Brooks talking about writing a love triangle, and I found it kind of interesting. Um <laughs> And his theory about uh, what that entails. I, I like I've never really thought about the process of writing something like that, right? Like I I, I think about like writing bits or like different things. Like he's he's kind of it's kind of cool here. I think this brings you back to your start, really, in uh, broadcast news. Um, when you made a film about it. Uh, you did a lot of research. Did you learn anything that you didn't know about the news business? Um, it was t- it was the time of the first massive layoffs that are still going on. The time New York Times announced today they're laying off a uh, hundred more people. Um, yeah, and um, and it was and it was the, the the time of those layoffs. But the most but this is one of the examples of research. I had to write this character who wasn't in it, played by Bill Hurt. Who, who was sort of a dumb guy, sort of a limited guy who, because he was good looking, was elevated basically to the top of the news department in, in very crude terms. And, um, and there was a guy on a CBS news show that was kissing show business for the first time that was on that show. And everybody in the news department made fun of him. And everybody, you know, he was a good-looking guy, and he 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 had not paid the dues. Everybody else had paid, and I interviewed him, and and it was the best thing I could that could have happened to me because he was aware that he was the butt of jokes, and suddenly he became sympathetic to me. And that, and I think, if I hadn't met him, I would have written the character in a much more two-dimensional way. So one thing that's interesting here is there are two endings to this film, and if you look at the Criterion. Uh, DVD, you can see the other ending that was shot, uh, which really changes how we see this film. Did you, when you wrote the script, were you uncertain about the end, or, or what made you shoot? I had this. Ending? I had this idea that the only way to do a romantic triangle was to really be open to to either guy getting the girl. You know that that you know every every romantic triangle you ever saw, it was sort of preordained who you should root for and who should get the girl. And you waited till that happened, and I and I left that open. I told the actors I was open to either one of them getting the girl, and so that that means that you're playing every scene. I'll, I, it was such a great time. You're 
you're playing every scene without having to have that result. The result of the scene must be that you like this person more. You, so, so it just made the work so much more interesting for everybody, for all of us. And then as we get, and then we got towards the end, I couldn't put her with any guy. And you, you don't want to end a romantic comedy that way, you know, preferably. But I couldn't do it. Uh, so I didn't. And then foreseeably, when you go out and you have, and you have testing, people weren't even sure which one they wanted her with, but they wanted her with somebody. So this is a, this is a long story. So I, had a, so I had an idea. There was, a, there was a French film, A Man and a Woman, that had a wonderful emotional ending where she gets off the train and I forget what the story was, but they weren't going to happen. And she suddenly sees him and the scene really gets you. And then I read that the director had not told her when she got off the train that he would be there or vice versa. I said, boy, that's so cool. And so I try to set it up with retakes. I told him we need a technical retake for Polly leaving the airport in a cab at the end of the, after they, after they were over. Leaving, leaving, leaving the airport with a cab, and I, and my joke, my not my joke, I was trying to emulate that French experience because at the last minute I was going to put Bill Hurt in the cab with her, in character that he came back, knowing that they were each good in improvisation, and seeing what would happen, and maybe I'd get just a juicy ending, and then just before Bill got it, and you know what, for a movie company to set up something like this and to be at LAX, it was like a big deal. And just before Bill got in the car, so somebody said, hey, Bill, one of the members on the crew, and, and it was over. And I went out of body. I think we filmed something. But you know, but that meant that I, I, I went with the original ending, which just projected them into the future and showed how. you know. And I think, I think it was. And then I saw the picture two years after I made it. And I figured with the ending I had, what the picture was really about was three people who lost their last shot at real intimacy, which sort of made, which I'd never intended when I wrote it, but you know, it's a team sport and a film can means, you know, if you work in a, in a great way, you know, and we, we had great people who worked in a great way on that picture, you know, you, you can end up having your film be about something you never imagined. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. No, I wish I watched, watched the rest of the uh, cut scenes. Yeah. <laughs> the, Wiley, the Wiley Coyote scenes are really the, the best ones. <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah, but I don't know. That's kind of fascinating. Um, I've never really thought about that writing process. But, like, you know, it, it does make sense that you choose these characters and you're like, oh, well, you know, you have to be open to um, either one winning. And then you're like, ah, fuck, like, yeah. which one really wins out in the end? Um, I mean, I think that some of it's metaphorical and and is kind of, you know, these different incentives really uh, pulling her in different directions. And it seems like in the end, she kind of makes her peace with the fact that news is now entertainment like seven years later and decides, mm -hmm. you know, it seems like she probably takes the decision to go um, with Tom wherever, you know, at, at whatever station he's working at. But I don't know. Well, yeah, I, I, I think, I mean, first of all, Albert Brooks was never going to get the girl. It just, it just <laughs> wasn't going to happen. I, I, I feel, and I feel like, you know, that early, you know, that they're just, they're just tight. Like, yeah. and, and, and you, you kind of get that sense. Uh, to, to, um, to force it up a bit. He was in the Conan Neutron in the uh, friends, uh, the secret friend zone. <laughs> <laughs> but he's in like a, but he's in kind of a, a very torturous version of the friend zone where they're like kiss. And it seems like they're kind of um, sharing that. Seems like something intimacy. could happen. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems like, mm. or it seems like something did happen maybe uh, yeah. at some point. And like, you know, they're together all the time. They, they kiss. It's not like they don't share the, the, those moments of physical intimacy. So it, it does make sense that kind of he's driven kind of so crazy by this girl. And by the fact that he's kind of at a dead end job that doesn't appreciate him, that he turns into this wildly coyote figure um, as soon as a much more more. I'm glad that's sticking, by the way. <laughs> as, soon as, well, as soon as like kind of an, an an alpha, an alpha, I guess, in the you know better looking um, and like you know doing this um, nonchalantly without even you know um, without having any talent. Well, he has talent, but without having any actual like uh, substantive talent, I think, right? Um, that he's kind of able. William to, Hurt, so, the Chad Runner. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, you have this Icarus moment where he flies, you know, he flies too close to the sun. And that's like when he's sweating on camera. And um, it's kind of like well, you, you, you tried to be you tried to be Tom. You tried to do this uh, 
this kind of anchor position mm -hmm. and you can't like you can't force yourself to fall upwards like yeah. you, you're just gonna fail and it just gets like it just spirals and gets progressively worse and to the point that like it almost starts being like a chaos cloud like when like the the background starts shaking and then somebody somebody like <laughs> raises it with their hand and they're like get the hand out of the fridge. hands and the shot hand the hands and shot. Hands shot yeah <laughs> like it's just like he's just sitting there like just just white knuckling his way through it just like you're know, reading the lines it's just like you know like just beads of sweat just like coming down his face and then like when it does the thing where like they, she goes to like like dampen him down and just like, and she's like oh jesus <laughs> yeah. and, then he's, and then he's like but to be to his credit to his credit he does indeed sit on his suit jacket yes yeah he does he's got a good line <laughs> You got a great, he's got a great line and the yeah. shoulder pads do help a little yeah. but yeah. it doesn't matter but he lost yeah. one in the uh, flood Right, exactly. I mean, if you've ever been in one of those uh, studio environments too, like the lights are just the like, lights are hot. Yeah. yeah, you're in a you're in a hot place, and definitely, and it's not like we've ever it's not like we've ever um, decided that any anchor is appropriately dressed if they're wearing like short sleeve shirts and like a polo or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're in a fucking suit in with hot lights over you, and you're expected not to be visibly sweating, and you're expected not to be visibly nervous. It's kind of um, the opposite of podcasting. <laughs> 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 yeah i mean and that if, if there's one good thing that like tyt and majority report and, and whatever have like sort of normalized is sort of like the people just looking he doesn't like he's having a heart attack right Matt yeah. Gilbert, uh is is the fact that people can just look like regular people and be talking about stuff and like that's okay you know and, and that and that's uh and i feel like that's happened it's a little bit different but in the late night talk show world as well Right, like the, the whole like you know sitting at the desk thing, you know I find her completely insufferable. But Samantha B does the mm -hmm. thing where she like is walking around the, to the screens and stuff. That's interesting looking, you know, as much as the content is trash. Uh, but the um, and John Oliver is a great example, you know, kind of mm -hmm. taking it and kind of putting it on on its end. In but some like ways, it, Samantha B is like that uh, Holly Hunter character taken to like her extreme. You know what oh I mean? God, she's yeah, like, yeah. She's overly insufferable. Overly, um, oh, she would to like Holly Hunter's like character in broadcast news would totally be with her still, yeah. still with her. She would totally be hashtag still with her 100%. That, that is a drag and a half. Wow, and and uh, Will Earth's character would certainly have sent a tweet out praising Mitt Romney for his, his bold vote of for impeaching Donald Trump for sure. I mean. <laughs> But he doesn't yeah. handle his tweets. He has like a team that does. He has a team that he doesn't even know. He's like, what's a Twitter? You know, like he doesn't even yeah. doesn't care about it. <laughs> <laughs> he's got, I got a team for that. I mean, it's Anderson Cooper. That's what it is, right? Like he's basically Anderson Cooper. Yeah. <laughs> Which, okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Like Anderson Cooper has, uh, they, they rolled out a new CNN service where, where you can pay to get more CNN. It's 24 hours news day. It's not enough for you. Yeah. Now, it's a, now, it's a, Cooper, now it's a 36 hour news day. Anderson <laughs> Cooper has a TV, you know, an extra TV show now giving out parenting advice. Like what uh. kind of advice does he have? He has nannies. He's a freaking like son of like one of the richest families in the world. Yeah. He's a Vanderbilt. He's, He's a fan. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. He's, never, he's not raising his kids. What is he gonna do? Like be interviewing his nanny? He's like, you know, so so how was I a father today? Oh yeah, you took him to okay. Ice well, cream. Which is also <laughs> makes uh Anderson Cooper kind of a, a more a bigger powerhouse kind of character. Uh, you know, if you think of him as, as a character, then like someone like Tom, who kind of comes from nowhere and is really good looking and just manages to fall mm -hmm. upwards. Anderson yeah. Cooper is always going to fall upwards because he's literally a vandal. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah there, there's nothing that's gonna happen with uh, Anderson Cooper that's gonna be bad because he could just buy his way out of it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was, I was going to say that the parenting advice was via Vanderbilt, but yeah, we already covered that already. But I think that that's you know, like that that's clearly something that they were like, "Hey, man, we need you on this thing. What can you do?" I'm like, I could give some parenting advice. That'd be fun. People would be looking for that. I'm a it, dad now. Yeah, in, in the way I'm that normal. only. Only in the way that only super rich people can be. Like when Gwyneth Paltrow was like, I'm going to, you know, what is the pussy candles? What was she selling? She was, yeah, I, she was I, 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 it, I, you know, I'm going to say this. I'm going to make this statement. It's white folks stuff, man. <laughs> it, it is. It, it, it is. And that's, and that is the one thing about this movie that is not lost on me. <laughs> is is that is that in a, and I'll say this as, as I've gotten older I've, I've I've definitely become more aware, but 
all these people are, even though they're failing, they're all still kind of failing up. Like, no yeah. one really loses out, out in this movie. I mean, obviously, William Hurt and Holly Hunter probably probably get more than Albert Brooks, but Albert Brooks still, he still has a kid, he gets married, he, you know, and, it, and, he, and he's seemingly happy. Everybody kind of still lives happily ever after. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, well, you know, I mean, I, you're, intensely, I, you're intensely focused on the career pitfalls and yeah. relationship status of three uh, <laughs> like white people who are making a lot of money. Yeah. And, and right, exactly. Yeah, and, yeah. And, <laughs> old I mean, media. It, it, yeah. I mean, it, but then when you start talking about Anderson Cooper and Gwyneth Paltrow, I mean, it, it's. I mean, people will eat it up. I mean, even when we were talking talking about Lou Dobbs, you know why Lou Dobbs is so relevant? Because there are white folks in Nebraska that love the guy. You know, and, and and will always love the guy, um, no matter what he says, and he just continually gets crazier and crazier as the years go along. It's really quite fascinating. Guy. It, 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 it almost it like is bit, actually right. Like I mean, it's, like his it's, it is it's it, it does seem like a bit like like you you're really like oh what's he what what crazy thing is he going to come up with this week? Yeah, yeah. You know? outdid himself. Um, <laughs> you done it again. <laughs> but that's also the thing about this movie. That fascinates me, especially being older. And now even like when I like the person who I was, the black man that I was in college versus the black man I am today and how I look at that movie, I still love it because it still tells the bigger story of of how news is no longer news. You know, it, it is it's it's infotainment, you know, like, news uh, is just like tough. Conan's like Conan's middle name. Yes. But at the same time, when I. When I when I when I when I put my black man's glasses on and then I look at that, it's like a it's like, you know, in a sense, I could see it being somewhat unrelatable then. And I could, it's definitely <laughs> unrelatable now. I mean, you know, but but nevertheless, I mean, and, and, and that's why like with with movies, actually with all movies, with most movies from the 80s and 90s that I watched, it's funny how how you know I was talking about William Hurt early earlier and how you you might look at them in a different light today, you know, even looking at these movies, you know, and just how they're, you know, especially in the eighties, like if they would have put that scene with the, with the, with the gameplay from the state department, oh man, that would, that would not have aged well at all. So, I mean, yeah. it's a, a good thing they didn't, but they almost did. <laughs> they filmed it. They blocked it. They, you know, they, you know, I mean, and luckily they they snipped it, but you know, I mean, you think about that. I mean, it, it's it's funny even to look at this movie for myself, even through that perspective. Um, and you had a lot of kind of love triangles between, uh, you know, professional managerial class level yes. white people. Like that was a big uh, yeah. genre, and it led to kind of the rise of like the the black supporting character that's just like the yeah. helpful oh, yeah. friend. But you know, that was a big thing too. And and you see that in this movie with uh, there's the one older black guy that works at the station, and yeah. his like one big line is uh, yeah. he he's sitting there and Aaron's like, "I'm doing the evening news tonight," and he's like. Way to go! And then yeah. well, one, he's you like, find out any more of it. you find out more yeah. about the editor's yeah. story after like than you find out about that. Yeah, I, lo I love that he's like, "Hey, Aaron," and then there's like a weird pause, like, "Way to go!" Like, <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he blacks it. He he does his he does his best Isaac, you know, from <laughs> from the love boat, you know, like his best. Way to go, man! You know, shakes his head a little bit, you know, like. It's a little shimmy into it, you know, a little bit. But you're right. That that is literally it's like his like only line. Yeah. The one I mean, I'm trying to think, is it like almost person of color, period, that has any sort of anything, you know, like in that in that movie, you know, and so it's yeah, yeah maybe but even that, cut, they had to like flag it up. It was, it was like they, they had another black character. That movie. It, what was that? Maybe, maybe in one of the cutscenes. Oh, the cutscenes. Yeah, too much. Ratio was off. Yeah, no, no. Just... <laughs> yeah, you know, ratio was off. You know, it's like we have to get rid of. We have to get rid of this know. scene for uh, ratio reasons. Oh, fine. Yeah, cut that scene. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he's no Eddie Murphy. You know, so he's 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 got to go. Eddie Murphy's hot right now. I mean, that black we can take. You know, this normal guy. You know, I mean, why do you think that? Uh, you know, from a. Ghostbusters, you know, black guy and both Ghostbusters Ghost barely in it, but, he, but he's still a Ghostbuster though. You know, still a <laughs> Ghostbuster. Fair, nobody knows who he is. To, to be fair though, <laughs> his character in a way is my favorite because he's the guy like 
all right, whatever, whatever y'all let me yeah. do, I'm just here for the paycheck, man. Like, what do we need to do? Great. Because of course he is. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, and, but it's, I think that it's interesting that they brought in that character uh, the, the way that they did. Uh, and it does make him a bit of a foil to the rest of them because they're like deep in their yeah. nerd shit and like whatever. And he's just like, yeah. what? Okay. The hell are you guys on about? Like, all right, Agreed. fine. What? Because because forbid a black man be smart. Well, <laughs> I'm just but, but the, I'm being honest though. I mean, let's yeah, let's, let's keep it a buck. But that I mean, was uh, that was the eighties. It was the 80s. Ivan Reitman, was, right? Know. Yeah. I mean, I I, yeah. I love Ghostbusters, but it, I mean, obviously, I named my show after it. But it's it's not without yeah. its flaws. I mean, sure. like, I mean, it, I mean, what, what I like Ernie Hudson. Period, is. <laughs> but, yeah, but me like, too. I, mean, I, I watch I, anything I, he's in. Like, like yeah. 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 Oh, he's yeah. in after the, the A team. Kind of the, yeah, the rat, let's watch that. The Rat Pack character, almost. You know what I mean? Like they yeah. have the the Rat Pack, and they oh, he's the Sammy and, of Ghostbusters. Yeah, he, you know, he's the <laughs> they bring Sammy Davis Jr. on stage once, in, like once in a while to to be the the butt of the jokes. And, hey, look, we got a black whatever. friend. Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, great. <laughs> well, I mean, I know obviously the it is correct that it was it was supposed to be Eddie Murphy, right? Like he was for Ghostbusters, to be, was it really? I yes. think at one point I, so it was, read, but it was like really early production. Yeah, so like, and it was like a they didn't know if it was a long shot, and you know that that he would even be in it. So they literally kind of wrote it for him to be in it, you know, in a, in a sense. And then it's like, all right, well, let's see what other black people we got around. Yeah, and when Ernie Hudson got yeah, and uh, he yeah. saw the, <laughs> he saw the uh, Eddie Murphy version and was like, oh, yeah. this is a really good role. And then yeah, they kept yeah. getting smaller and smaller and mm-hmm. smaller. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. so originally Eddie Murphy was gonna be uh was gonna be in Ghostbusters in the Ernie Hudson yeah. role. Yeah, and I've forgotten this. John Belushi was originally gonna be Peter Venkman, which makes yeah. that movie one hundred percent different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah. Uh, yeah, like crazy, right? But let's yeah. let's um since we're since I can I can segue this a little bit. Uh, J- James L. Brooks actually wrote this movie for the Holly Hunter character to be played by Deborah Winger. De- yeah, I mentioned that at the beginning of the show. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But Crazy. you know, and 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 I mentioned uh, Catherine O'Hara, right? But I actually found some other folks that uh, were yeah. considered for the role, including Sigourney Weaver. Okay, I think that's a different. That's a different movie. That's a, that's different, a different movie, movie. But, I, I, but still could have. Would have been Still interesting. Yeah, would have been interesting. Uh, that would have been pre 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 aliens. No, eighty seven. No, 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 would have been eighty seven. Would be post aliens. Yeah. Uh, Judy Davis from Barton Fink, of amongst other yeah. movies, the beloved Barton huh. Fink. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> That's a guy. I love your reactions to this, by the way. Uh, <laughs> uh, hold on, where to go? Um, Elizabeth Perkins. Oh, you know, you know, it's funny. I'm watching. My wife and I are watching uh, War of the Worlds, a TV series. Oh, is that any good? Right now with Gabriel Byrne, it, it's yeah. two seasons oh. in. And... Wait, wait, not the one with uh, Duncan McLeod from Highlander. <laughs> no, no, uh, no. I, I had to think about it for. That's a minute. the proper reaction like, to what Andy yeah. just yeah. said. By the way, yeah, you just no. reacted very well. No. No. It, it, it's Gabriel Byrne. No. Uh, yeah, yeah. Elizabeth McGovern. Um, yeah, those are the recognizable. Like you know, I, people in I, it. I feel like I feel yeah. like they choose. That wouldn't have worked. The, the I don't Holly think that would have worked. Character either. has yeah. to be someone who's really, really likable for the for the yeah. movie to work, right? Yeah, um, yeah, but it can also it, be type A. Like, like, like that's but also uh, has to look like the little engine that could too though yeah yeah like i mean it has to be that man she's she fights over a weight class you know like kind yeah, of yeah, like, yeah, exactly. like yeah. that and elizabeth i didn't McGovern, know she was so good that. yeah <laughs> I, I just i don't but that's the thing about sigourney weaver she's like kind of intimidating looking in an address and i i just don't know if that would have worked because holly hunter doesn't necessarily Look intimidating, but she just is by force. She's, she's of got, she, I, I, yeah, she, yeah. You know. She she's got the, uh, and I've had it ascribed to myself and made it a lifestyle brand, but the big raccoon energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. yeah there, um, there I don't know. know. Elizabeth Perkins kind of, uh, <laughs> she's she's really good in uh, in weeds. I like I like weeds. That I, I, I like that a lot. And she has Celia as that kind of uh, like you know her her neighbor that's kind of always that you know always trying to like bring oh, her down and dang it, I was thinking of the wrong person. 
Yeah, it's Elizabeth McGovern in World of Worlds. Well, not, well, not but, Elizabeth, but Elizabeth but McGovern think. and Elizabeth Perkins were both up for the role. So oh, they uh, oh, okay. So yeah. I did hear both. Yeah, thought I was going crazy. No, yeah, no, yeah. no, not well, not for this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. uh, yeah, like so, all of those are different, and I think yeah. that uh, the only one of those that I think would really, really, I could see Judy Davis pulling it off, but like it would be a diff- it would be a different feel. And it probably would have ended up, unfortunately, being more on the romantic comedy side. I think Scorny Weaver could have pulled it off, but it's different. It would hit way different. Yeah. 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 She's kind of intimidating by size and just yeah. like weird, yeah. whatever. And Holly Hunter is kind of just intimidating because she just, I don't know, she just does it. She pulls it off. She's just, got, she's just like a little dynamo. She's like got electricity, yeah, like exactly. flying off her, right? So, you, yeah. you know, did you guys see The Big Sick? Uh, that movie that yeah. Kamel Nanjiani made? Kamel and... Oh, no, uh, I haven't. No, I haven't seen it. And... Oh. Um, Thinking of the big what's, it, what's the what's, uh, what's the woman's name? Ellie, Ellie, Ellie Kazan's granddaughter, so I think, right? Isn't she the girl in that? Oh, really? Is that? Oh, oh I don't, yeah. I, 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 I'm familiar. I haven't, I haven't watched it. I've had it on my watch list for like two years. <laughs> sure, but yeah, Zoe Kazan, uh, that plays the, yeah, but that that's a movie that um Holly Hunter plays the uh the mother in law. Oh, sick. Um, and and she does a really good job in that. It's her. Yeah, she's, she's married to. She's married to Ray Romano in that movie. It's like they're like a <laughs> really. Yeah, and they're supposed to be Zoe Kazan's uh, parents. <laughs> that's a. That's a. Uh, hmm. <laughs> that's somebody punching above their weight class for sure. Uh, this, this movie, hmm. but Ray Romano plays Tom. <laughs> oh. Not as good as Gilbert Godfrey, but since he's out of Ray Romano can be a lot of fun too. Like, like you know. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, but he's not like, conventionally like the most handsome of bros. He's not. No, he's not no, a, but it, like, like he's also very funny. Like, like uh, yeah. uh, I know you like get shorty. I I do like it. Yeah, shorty, yeah, which which I I don't, but I appreciate Ray Romano in it. So I appreciate the fact that you needed to say it's time, time to read the the evening news. <laughs> Debra, Debra, I, I lost my I lost my teleprompter. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm not good at my job. <laughs> so anyway, those are the folks that that could have been yeah. in the um, in the role that Holly Hunter played, which uh, none of them like it, this. It, this movie is perfect for her. like, and yes. she she is like she lost a share for best actress, I think, this year. Uh, Mask Moonstruck? It was either uh, I don't know. What's yeah, because I think Mask was a little earlier. It, it might have been it might have been Moonstruck, which actually I don't Which is one of those weird good, movies that but... I actually did watch, which is not a movie I normally would, but <laughs> I was because I was drawing and I was really into it and I couldn't change the channel. So <laughs> yep. you know, that's how I watched uh Moonstruck. I watched uh I watched Moonstruck in high school for some reason, and I can't remember why, but there was because you were that... drawing and you couldn't change the channel. <laughs> no, but there was a class that they were like they, they were trying uh-huh. to teach you something using Moonstruck. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Hmm. But no, how I to make a mediocre watched... movie that wins an Oscar? Hung, it's a yeah. it's a hungover uh, substitute teacher. Uh... I never saw it. <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't even know what it was about. What was it even about? It's like I, a pizza guy falling in love with Cher, and, and uh, yeah. they were like all Italian. Oh. Yeah, they're like immigrant. Like they're <laughs> <Italian immigrants, right? laughs> oh, yeah, that's the best yeah. summation I could give. Hey, it. Yeah, Oscar worthy <laughs> plot if there ever was one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's how they inaugurate um, Italians into being white. Now they just do that movie and Oscar. They're like, there you go. You guys are <laughs> y'all white now. now. <laughs> you're in. You're in the club. You're in the club. The it's, new award show, the uh, the whiteies, they they inaugurate. <laughs> Wait, did you say new award show? Anyway. It's a new, yeah. uh, well, you know, <laughs> they, they, they inaugurated, hey, they inaugurated the, Polish, the Polish a couple years ago. They, they, they inaugurated yeah, yeah, the yeah. Italians. Uh. Yeah. Oh, they'll let anyone in. Uh, yeah. yeah, but Holly Hunter did not win Best Actress uh, because it went to Cher. And that was that surprising mm. to me. But whatever. It's the Oscars. Like. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on! Was like not even like in contention. Green Knight wasn't even nominated for cinematography. Coda plays like a Disney Channel movie. I mean, like, like whatever. Like, and, and I'll praise the Jessica Chastain, but that Isaac Tammy Faye movie blows. Anyway, that's a preview of the kind of content you will get when we talk about our favorite movies of twenty twenty one, which I think we're gonna do eventually, right? Yeah, we're doing sometime this month. Um, I know, got thoughts. Being seasonally, seasonally sick. <laughs> 
Um, do you want to do you want to do the letterbox one liners uh, before we jump off and head to the? Uh, yeah, party? absolutely, absolutely. So uh, yeah, this. <clears throat> Let me. See. I don't need papers to shuffle. There. <laughs> uh the so yeah letterbox is a place for film social media site uh for film lovers to talk at with and to each other about the movies they love about the movies that they don't love about the movies they're baffled or confused by about the movies that they disassociate to whatever it's all there and uh, it's all on the internet it's a bottom up democracy everyone gets to have their say not just the siskels and the eberts and the, and the big critics and of course some of the best reviews that you will find on this site for the various movies uh, are in the classic one-liner form, which is what this is. This is the Letterbox one-liners for broadcast news, movie next extravaganza. Let's go, Forrest. That man can sweat. <laughs> he sweats more than Nixon. Yes. Yes. <laughs> What's that line? He, goes, he sweat more than Nixon ever did. <laughs> is, it, is anybody seeing this? <laughs> or he's like, is this bad? Is this bad? <laughs> I like, I like, uh, are you 26, like, like are, are 26 people, 26 people were dead, and I wish I was wish one I of were, them. Oh, the best, yeah. one of the best lines of that movie, and I wish I were one of them. <laughs> Moms everywhere would subscribe to CNN Plus for 1980s William Hurt. <laughs> yeah, like he's Anderson Cooper. Mm. <laughs> yep, except for yeah. potentially straight. I don't know. I didn't ask. Depending on, depending on which version you watch, apparently. <laughs> Scumbag himbo will hurt continuously failing upwards is a great metaphor for this country. Yeah. At, at the very least, like, you know, the, the white upper uh, class yeah. of this country, right? Like, they can't yeah. really ever fall out yeah. of that strata. Which, which has been the case since, I don't know, 1619? <laughs> <Probably>. <laughs> The 1619 project in, in is this just, country, uh, anyway. I the mean, 1619 officially's... project is just a, a, a map of all the different ways white people have fallen. <laughs> <up there. laughs> it, 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 it's actually just a map of all the different himbos in 1619. <laughs> oh man, there were so many himbos in 1619. So many himbos. Yeah. Whoa, like, Pilgrim it, these... Rock. Pilgrim Rock fell on us. Woof. <laughs> dang it, these <laughs> Plymouth, Plymouth Rock. <laughs> these Dutch people ride my coattails. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Having Holly Hunter softly talk in my ear while I get paid to look pretty kind of sounds like my dream job. I mean, she kills it like talking him through that, right? Like, and, and it kind of helps that he has that mercurial look where you can't really tell, well, you know, that he, he's. he's here, here's my question, it, it, and I, I was telling my wife this last time we were watching it. He's got a teleprompter. Right. So when is he sliding in all the things that Holly Hunter's telling him well, while like, he's it's, reading it's the breaking news? So so I don't know how much is actually in the teleprompter, though. Okay, because they, they show him reading it. Yeah, okay. All right. uh, no, that makes least, sense. You, what you said totally makes sense. It, it Yeah. Because it's breaking news. Because I remember, yeah. um, yeah. I, I used to watch Rachel Maddow all the time, and um, mm. uh, there when was she like used to uh, be an investigative reporter. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Um, but but uh, th there was like an emergency that happened, and uh, she was completely. Uh, it was like uh, uh, I think it was like the Boston bomber or something like that, and she was completely freaking out on on TV. Um, yeah. And. and it was it was terrible TV because like like yeah. no, you know, freaking out was, on TV because she couldn't find a way to connect it to Russia. Hey, no, I mean this is back whenever the show was actually watchable. Uh, yeah. before, before that, <laughs> where she joke. actually would occasionally make a, a reference to Watchmen uh, that was actually comic accurate. So you know, um, there there or was her that. writers or her writers would. <laughs> yes, her. Okay, yeah, actually, because because the show's quality uh, dropped once Bill Wolf left the show, um, which which that's how much I was watching the show, and I am embarrassed to admit that, that I know this, but. <laughs> Um, the, the point is, is that like during a live event, you don't always have stuff like right in front of you to tell you what to say. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and it is, it is, a, a you know, a certain type of person that can actually pull off, uh, even with, you know, somebody in your ear telling you what to say, Not which is me, kind of disconcerting. But, which, um... <laughs> I, I mean, like, like Conan knows this cause he's been in recording studios a lot more than I have. Uh, but the yep. one time I experienced it, it really was just completely disconcerting. <laughs> All right, let's go. Just wait till they turn this into an NFT. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, 
that that hit differently when we did American Psycho, and there was one of those ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it's it's. <laughs> I, I feel like that's a pretty evergreen one liner that's going to age differently as time goes on. But yeah, when we have our first NFT president, um, <laughs> <sighs> Twilight for journalists. <laughs> yeah. And, and... No. Yeah, it is. <laughs> no, no. I love the part where um uh the 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 you know Holly Hunter sees uh um Albert Brooks's baby. And then becomes like obsessed with it. Oh, I thought you were gonna say, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love the part where Tom turns into a werewolf, like live on. <laughs> it was no, a deleted scene. Now, that's the howling, um, by the way, <laughs> where, where the newscaster turns into a werewolf, which mm. is great. it's in the Criterion version of uh, Broadcast News too. People don't know it. <laughs> People haven't seen it. They're talking it's in about black it. and white in black yeah, and white. Exactly. Giant. They never even yeah. exactly for dramatic effect. <laughs> Wait, that was that was a uh, Citizen Kane. <laughs> Who's <laughs> <laughs> the king all right. the entire time? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right, hey. P. William Hurt, the great stone faced himbo of the years. <laughs> and I have, and I, have uh, I have a weird uh, <laughs> David Letterman clip that I'll play in the in the after party where it's uh, William Hurt talking to David Letterman, and he's he's stone faced. He definitely is. Yeah, that's definitely a stone faced himbo thing to say. <laughs> it's the wire. To networks, The Sopranos. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. Hmm. It's, it's I was actually out. watching Siskel and Ebert arguing that this this might actually be better than Network. Um, well, of course they would argue that they're not like ideologically <laughs> driven, or you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> man, I, hmm, I don't know. I know. I don't know. I Network spoke to a lot of ideas that I've had yeah. that I haven't seen a movie actually able to put into like. Uh, an effect, and I I don't think that this movie is better than that. <laughs> they're they're like both if, very good. They hit. Different. I feel like if you if anything you you switch them. I think it's the network is the wire to broadcast mm. news. Yes, yeah. I, I I think if anything it's the other way around. All right, Tim Cop, yeah. <laughs> yeah. put you on notice. Love yeah. triangle between three blue check marks. <laughs> I had to hold back from I had to hold back from uh, making that joke where you where you said the thing about Aaron having a check mark because I was like, all right, yep. that's, that's one that's going to be in the, in the letterbox one liners. It is though. I, that is exactly what this movie is. It's three check mark uh, journalists, you know, journalists yeah. like battling for love. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a better preview than the actual <laughs> film. By the way, they that's all have it. check marks. Da, da, They're da, all on da, Twitter. Da, da, Their movies da, 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 are almost identical. <laughs> But you know, in 1987, nobody would have known what Twitter was or what a yeah, but, checkmark is, dude. And then, how, how many minds would have been blown? They would have, huh? yes. they would have been interested and they would have turned on the, the movie to find out. <laughs> a movie about the burden of being smart enough to know that you'll never be truly happy. <laughs> yes, very on the nose. That's Griffin I'll Newman. Anyway. I don't, I don't. I don't often give praise or shout outs to other movie podcasts, but that's Griffin Newman of the blank check podcast. And I thought that was very astute. And uh, sometimes it's just stuff I like. It's not necessarily because it's funny. So there you go. Yeah, Those are the letterbox box. reviews for broadcast news. Follow movie next Extravaganza on letterbox. That is a uh, forest over there. I, of course, am Coda neutron. You may can and should follow me on letterbox. I'm probably the most active of all these guys. And then also Jay Andy world down there. Uh, is also on Letterboxd. Go follow him. Just a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, all of most of our featured guests, a lot of them are on there as well. Everyone's in the orbit. It's a fun. It's a fun site. It's one of the only social media sites I like. So that should tell you something. Andy World, please take it away. All right. If you're watching us right here on Twitch, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of an allergy attack. <laughs> but if you're watching this right here on Twitch, don't pull an Albert Brooks on this. Yeah, I, I'm going <laughs> to break out the flop sweat uh, right now. Um, but nobody will notice. Nobody will notice. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, no, no. Make sure you do the. Um, make sure you, you subscribe if you can. Uh, that helps us out. If you have an Amazon Prime account, please subscribe because that doesn't cost you anything. But that that actually helps us out a lot. If you're watching us over on YouTube, do the YouTube things. Smash that bell. Like you know, um, they wanted to smash each other because everybody wanted to smash each other. Smash that bell. Like, <laughs> smash that bell like sweat smashed uh, Aaron's yeah. forehead. Yes, um, <laughs> and, and, and you know, hit the like, the bell, the the um, comment. Comments, uh, you know, a great way to help us out too. And uh, whether we read it or not, it's a different story. And finally, the most important thing: watch the video to the end because that uh, does help other movie fans find our videos. 
And uh, we, we, also we appreciate have... your service. Yes, Thank you. yes, we really do. <laughs> and we do try to keep it entertaining to the end. So, you know, and this that song slaps that Conan just made, which we haven't really said. Um, yeah, no, that song, that song, I love yeah. the, it's time. I, I showed it to my mom earlier and she started cracking up when you're, when the voice came in and was like, oh, like. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, and, and uh, but yeah, um, you know, so please watch, uh, watch us to the end. And um, we have a Patreon. The Patreon uh, also helps us out to get you access to, you know, if you can't watch the post game, uh, I'm sorry, not post game. If you can't watch the after party now, guess what? You can watch it whenever you want. If you're, if you're a patron, um, you can also get uh, other things that we plan on bringing out in the future, but we haven't quite done yet, but that we may eventually do. Yes. Yeah. We, we are planning on more, <laughs> uh, more things for you. Uh, so stay tuned and we'll announce those as we actually make them. <laughs> Indeed. Well then, right. at least when well, I stop being so damn sick all the fucking time, yeah, 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 like do things more than once every other day. More like when you can start being S I Q Q sick all the yeah. time. Yeah, <laughs> sick. <laughs> we if you put a, if you hit. if you put a if you put an S between the I and the Q and an O, that would be Cisco. Sick. <laughs> and this is my this is everybody my knows Cisco, song. right? This, yeah. Is, yeah, uh, this is my you song song right here, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this show is my personal thong song, yes. Yeah. Yeah. With, thong, a, thong, with thong. an extra Q, an extra Q for an extra dose of uh, Qs, I guess. The, the extra Q is for value. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, it was for conspiracy theories. The extra the extra Q is for JFK Junior Junior, who is you know going to be coming back <laughs> <Yeah>. and. Uh, <laughs> Fighting the pedophiles for us. <laughs> final oh, thoughts, wow. right? I hope. Yeah, final thoughts. Time. <laughs> uh, JB, you got some final, you got some uh, final thoughts sure. going on. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, first of all, thoughts. thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you Thanks for having me, everybody. Uh, yeah. This was fun. And we'll, yeah. hit some of these, we'll hit some stuff on this uh, uh, harder in the after party. So if you have anything that you wanted to elaborate on, we'll hit it. We'll oh, hit okay. It that. All right, sure. Um, no, final thoughts is uh, this is a... Uh, this is one of those movies that I actually, because I don't recommend many movies to people, but this is one that I actually do. I think it's relevant to even to today. And, uh, and uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's it's really all I got. Yeah. I was stoked that's when all, you... That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> uh, that? I, it was, I, I was stoked when you suggested it because yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, that'd be a great one to cover. That sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. So... And load as was. many as many political as many talks we have about about pop culture and life and yeah, political, yeah. you know, in, in the van. Mm -hmm. I think this this movie fits right into it. So we, we yes. may have some of those this week, even we'll see. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Conan. Final thoughts. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a interesting movie and the fact that it is 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 very clearly a romantic comedy as, as that preview would definitely lead you to believe <laughs> but uh also it's a scathing indictment and sort of like a sardonic farce on what was happening to news at that time of which that has now completely changed which makes it a snapshot of an interesting mm -hmm. time within news and culture to, uh, to see those changes put forward i think it's impeccably acted I think uh, the, the three principles are all utterly fantastic at what they do. Uh, I agree that it's not really, there's not any clear protagonist. Everyone's pretty flawed in their way, as are most humans. Uh, I think it's very well directed. I was shocked at how long it was because I do not remember mm -hmm. it being a very long movie because it just moves right along. Mm -hmm. Also, can we just say maybe one of the best Jack Nicholson's, do we call it a cameo? Yeah. Like he wasn't like Bill. He didn't, his he didn't even want credit. He didn't want he credit. Didn't want he credit. didn't want anyone to know that, that he didn't want to be put on the bill or anything like that. And he basically yeah. plays like the Walter Cronkite, you know, yeah. like whatever the season, the season anchor. Uh, and he's, he's crucial to the yeah. to the rest of the movie. And we'll probably yeah. get into it, I hope, in the, in the after show, because we're uh, like when they're talking about the, the layoffs and he's like, well, you could yeah. cut your salary. And he's just like, <laughs> that's no, that's just some sick Come joke. On. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That dude is the best. The, the yeah, he's, he's the... so good. Yeah, yeah. And so I think this movie is is awesome. I actually I actually saw this and Network both uh, for the first time around the same time, and I think that they are certainly uh, cousins to each other, although they yeah, hit completely differently. 
And mm-hmm. uh, I think this is a very enjoyable movie that I don't love the ending, but I get why it's the way that it is. And I don't necessarily have a better idea for like how it could end. I think it's, a, I think it's good. I think it's enjoyable watch. And uh, I don't think I've heard it discussed anywhere other than the show that, that I'm aware of. So glad to be a part of it. And uh, it was really nice having GB on because my secret plan of having everyone that ever has yeah. been or will be okay. in Kona Neutron, the secret friends yeah. being on this show is gradually coming yeah. together. <laughs> it is. Glad, glad to make your evil plans. Uh, right, <laughs> exactly. It's, 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 a, it's the frog in the boiling uh, pot of water, right? You just turn it up slowly. Good. Yeah. Yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andy, you got some final thoughts for us, buddy? Yeah, I will say um, I, I, this is my first time watching it. I, I you know, uh, when it came out, I was, uh, what, 10 when it came out. So I have no interest in watching this thing. Um <laughs> It's a kissing movie. We established. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. No, and, and, <laughs> it's a movie about the news. Like, and, and honestly, but like, like it's, it's one of those movies that kind of also got memory hold a bit too. Like, like it is a great, well acted, well, well everything movie. But like, it's not one of those like absolute banger classics. Yeah. It's still a banger. Don't get me wrong. But yeah. but uh, and and I really did enjoy it. Um, my, my biggest surprise though was like how toxic Albert Brooks was in this film, <laughs> because like you know Albert Brooks is charismatic af like 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 i've never seen anything where you don't like him even even as the heavy in drive which which is uh you know such a departure from um he still had a bit of that that charisma that he has and um to see him be such like a toxic jerk um m- makes me kind of wonder like why he hasn't done more of that um because because it'd be kind of interesting to see and, and I he think plays a good heavy Brooke, you're right yeah style, yeah, yeah no absolutely <laughs> The Albert Brooks style character, almost like you know, kind of the the guy that's too smart for his own good. This yeah. kind of side character, there's a friend. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like they kind of got moved to the forefront with like Judd Apatow movies, right? Like Seth Rogen as kind of yeah. a, a, a kind of an yeah. unmotivated smart alley like stoner guy that gets to be at the front of these uh, movies, and they don't usually hit how toxic those people can be. You know what I mean? Like they've kind of started to. They have like uh, there's that series Love that kind of does that. But it's it's cool to see that in this movie and to see like how actually like petty and toxic and oh, kind Green of Hornet he was a little toxic. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Andy World, everybody. <laughs> yes, there we go. <laughs> obscure, obscure superhero movie. I got it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, no. I um, but but that was like my big takeaway from the movie was just like it, it. It seemed like like the reason why it works so well at the end where they don't end up with each other is because like. Um, what Albert Brooks was doing personally, um, William Hurt was doing professionally, you know, the kind of gaslighting and, and manipulating mm-hmm. people's emotions. Yeah. The difference is, is like, I think uh, what, what, um, uh, what, what Tom was doing was actually for the betterment of society um, by, you know, crying in the piece. Yeah, it's fake. But like he genuinely felt that. So he, he, he allowed that to kind of mm-hmm. come out and, you know, so, so, so how wrong is that? Yeah, it was a little manipulative, but not not nearly as much as Albert Brooks was at the end, you know, trying to manipulate uh, Holly Hunter into yeah, into being with him. I want to equate that with like Brian Williams? Yeah, right. You know, I mean, war, like, war hero. <laughs> yeah, war hero Brian Williams. Exactly. <laughs> Does everyone remember that? Yeah. <laughs> he barely got a suspension for that. Uh, like he he was back yeah. on. He just kind of got knocked down from NBC to MSNBC pretty fast. Yeah. Well, pretty much, and he is—he is truly our generation's himbo. <laughs> yeah. But still, still making a lot of money. Yeah, it's still, still successful. Exactly. Yeah, he never failure, Brian you know. Williams. Who yeah, that's that's more money than any of us ever will. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll we'll have we'll discuss a lot more in the uh, after party. Much more Brian Williams um, coming up. More Brian Williams. I have, I have a clip of uh, I have a clip of uh, James L. Brooks talking about directing Jack Nicholson, both in terms of endearment and this. I have. I have a few clips left that I didn't get to in this. So, uh, yeah, it should be a fun conversation. I will say my final thoughts. Uh, 120 people reported injured, at least 22 people dead. I wish I were one of them. 